everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octeo Studio, and today I'm sharing with you two more of the prompts from the 31 days of gel printing in March. This was from days 27 and 28. This one is printing with cardboard, and this is a really fun thing to do. Um, I'm showing you how I'm making a cardboard printing plate. First, I just grabbed a piece of random cardboard off of a box and I drew a design on it and then I am using an exacto knife to cut around my design and then a little stylus to help me remove some of the paper exposing the corrugated stuff on the inside. So I'm carefully choosing where I'm going to remove paper and where I'm not going to remove paper in order to make a more dynamic design. And of course, this is just, just a flower with a stem and a leaf. This takes a little while because you've got to kind of, you know, fuss around with this paper and get it peeled off enough so that those stripy corrugated pieces underneath show through the design while still keeping the one the flat pieces that you want to to remain so it's just a little bit time consuming but not too bad it's it's pretty fun and it comes off fairly easily and if you make a mistake like you'll see me do here in a second i'm uh, carving out the leaf and i decide that i want a solid piece on the inside but it starts to tear i just glue it back down and then continue on so that I can have that solid stripe in the middle of the leaf. So I suggest you all try this. I made several pieces. Um, I don't show the making of each one. This is the only one that I show because it's the same thing over and over, just drawing a pattern and then cutting and removing paper. So I think you can figure it out. <laughs> This small ball stylus is the easiest thing to help me um, pick up the papers and remove them. And then once everything was removed, then I cut around the edges. Uh, instead of leaving it in a rectangle, I cut a border around the whole flower. I'm not sure why I did that. It would have been fine leaving it as a square, but I guess I just felt like it. I don't know. <laughs> So then I'm trying it out on my 6x6 six six, uh, gel plate using some different colors, bright colors. It was, you know, a flower, spring, that whole thing. And as I start to print it, I think, oh, I'm going to put the excess paint from the cardboard onto my bigger plate. It doesn't, a lot of it doesn't come off, actually. So I think because... The cardboard is a porous material. It probably absorbs quite a bit of the paint as you're doing it. But then I think as the piece is used more and more and more and builds up more acrylic layers on it, because I'm not going to clean it, um, it, will, it will have more to deposit on the second um, printing there. Because even with this black, not, not very much came off even though I went right to the plate. There's a little bit, but not a whole lot. So I found that kind of surprising. So this time I put black on the plate and then I took some brighter colors and an artist sponge and sponged over the areas, depositing the color where I wanted it instead of just rolling it on there with a the brayer. And this little print turned out really cute. One of my favorites. Then I just went over the whole backing with some white and printed it to pull up all those layers onto the paper. And it's, it's a cute one. I like that combination of black and bright. So then I moved on to some of my other pieces that I had made. This uh, next set, I used uh, corrugated paper. So it's like cardboard, only it doesn't have that top layer on it. So you don't have to peel anything back. 
and this stuff is easy to find. It's uh, I, mine is from Canvas Court Brands because they sell a lot of different corrugated paper options and different thick and thin pieces. But I cut these with my die cut machine using a combination of oval, square, and circular dies. Just to make some dynamic pieces to use. I don't want everything to be real symmetrical, so I'm putting some of the pieces on the insides of other ones in a kind of an offset way. I ended up not liking the squares very much, but I really like these overly circly pieces. They kind of, I don't know, they remind me of the 60s or something. I don't know. They're pretty cool. I used them a few times. And then I just put another layer of color over to fill in all the areas and to pick up this whole dried section off of the plate. This time I'm using one of my cardboard or the cardstock pieces because it's I'm going to put it in my gel print journal when I'm finished. So that will be folded in half, printed on both sides, folded in half, and put sewn into the book. I will show that process when I do it. It hasn't happened yet. And then that one I put copper to pick it up and it was pretty, but there was a lot left and so I put some black on and then I got uh, turquoise, copper, and black on my print. So those two were pretty cool for cleanup prints. And then here are some more pieces that I made using just regular cardboard. Well, not those ones on the 6x6. Those are also die cut pieces, but, but the ones I'm going to put on the 12x12, 12 12, they're more of those just standard cardboard off of a box pieces, and I've cut them away using patterns. There's a, um, I drew a vine, a checkerboard, a diamond, um, an eye shape. Same thing as I did at the very beginning. And I'm kind of using them as stamps to remove paint off of the plate. And then um, I will, of course, pick up all that plate, that paint using a second layer. I heard somebody describe this as dry printing. I, I don't know why. I mean, I guess because the first layer is dried onto the plate somewhat. And this is easy for me to do in Arizona. You guys need to remember that your climate affects how fast you can do this. My paint dries so fast here that I don't have to wait around a long time. Some of you might need to wait in between the first layer and the second layer until that's fairly dry on your plate. And then the top layer needs to be thin. You need to basically be able to see the dry layer underneath. And if you can't see the dry layer underneath, when you apply your second layer, you need to continue to brayer off paint until you can. Because it needs to be a thin, thin, so that it can bond to the, the paint underneath and then pick up all of it at once. If it's too gloppy, then all you do is just pick up that wet paint off the top and uh, the paint underneath doesn't come off. So this time I'm removing all the paint around my design <clears throat> by using a scrap piece. And I'm going to use these PBO Dyna iridescent paints. And this, this print I loved, 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 favorite one. <laughs> so I'm just putting some of the iridescent paints onto my six by six to use it as a palette. And I'm using my two inch brayer to apply it all around and over the design where I've picked up all the excess, um, it was unbleached titanium paint. And then I even remove all my little pieces and add some of the red. The, the <clears throat> links to all these colors of PBO will be in the description box below. They have weird names like red, blue, and blue, green, and green, black, and, you know, just strange stuff like that. And the one I'm putting on top is blue, black, and then I'm printing it onto black cardstock. So it's got a really dark 
base layer, which makes a difference in this case. Those iridescent paints are always pretty over black. Isn't that neat? <laughs> when I pick it up, you'll see that it's shimmery. I like that one. That was my favorite one. So then I've, um, I'm making, as I'm going along with all these, I'm making tags that I'm put, putting it on a ring to remember all the things that I did during this challenge, which actually was last month and it's almost the end of this month already. Um, I probably will not finish it in April. It's probably going to mush on into May. I'm not sure. But anyway, a lot of gel printing videos happening and that's always fun. So I'm wanting to work on my tag, so I put the blue onto my 12 by 12 and then um, some other colors over the top to pick it up to, onto my tag for my cardboard gel printing tag, day number 27, I think. <laughs> that uh, little tag book is getting really fat. So pretty soon... You will be seeing the close-ups and moving on to the next technique. On day 28, the prompt was combs, and obviously Jelly Arts and Gel Press both have a collection of combs that you can purchase. I have one of those around here somewhere, but I couldn't find it. So I am just using styrofoam and plastic from packaging and making my own, just using some decorative shears that I've had around for ages. These things still exist and you can certainly purchase them if you don't have them. They're paper cutting shears that have different designs on the edges. And they've come in handy lately. I've been doing quite a few things. But I'm using big ones and small ones. Um, deckle edge. The type of edge that's like a pinking shear. Then of course different sizes of scallops. And these will all make different designs on the plate. So when you put the paint on, this is a simple, simple thing to do. It's really, it's just not my favorite thing to do though. I don't love it that much, but it is, it is definitely an interesting technique. And you just drag the comb over the paint to remove it in designs. And you can even use a real comb like that one if you want to. <laughs> That's just a, my shower comb that I use to comb um, through to comb conditioner through my hair when I'm in the shower sometimes. So I wanted, I didn't want to, um, well, I wanted to use these pieces of paper that have roll off on them. You know, I'm, I'm collecting a lot of them. They rolled off paint onto uh, the paper on the side. And some of them are very colorful. And I thought that that would be a good way to use the um, papers that I have by printing with, with combs over the top. So a lot of these prints, that's what I did. Uh, I used the roll-off papers. Sometimes the roll-off papers are really, really pretty. You get an interesting collection of colors, <clears throat> especially if you're in a color family mood. <clears throat> like maybe you used all greens or all blues or all cool colors that day. Your roll off paper might be really pretty. And so don't throw that stuff away. You can use it for collages. And in this case, I used it for printing my comb um, prints over the top. Not all of them, but some of them I did. So that one was just on regular paper on the back of one of my pieces that will be going in my gel print journal when I get to it. 
this one I put so much paint on it was way too thick and um, you do need the paint to be the type of paint that will stay wet a little while and uh, you want it on there pretty thick so that you can peel it off with your combs but it was awfully thick and I made the mistake of using the wrong side of this paper <laughs> has way too much black on it and that's just ugly gross yuck <laughs> but since there was so much paint on there I was able to do a second ghost print and it's really pretty so I redeemed myself on the second one <laughs> that sometimes happens it happens to the to the best of us uh, we all make ugly prints occasionally so no worries and that one picked up the dark paint underneath. It picked up the whole layer, which I thought was kind of interesting, those arced, darker pieces underneath. So now I'm moving on to some purple. Why not? And I have this one little piece of plastic that I didn't cut at all. It's like kind of a an arced shape. It was from the top of a packaging to to hold it onto a hook <clears throat> at the store and I'll show it you it up close it's clear so it's hard to see but it makes a really fun way to do a design so I'm removing paint with this little comb you just by kind of just spinning it around and and uh, making some flower and leaf shapes so that was really fun so I thought okay I'll uh, I'll do some sponging over the top, but then I realized that my palette over there on the side was full of paint, so I needed to clean that first. <laughs> so I made that print with some silver PVO. <clears throat> and then I have white, pink, and uh, portrait pink on here, and I'm sponging that over, to, over the flowers, where the flowery abstract pieces are and then I will roll it with green over the whole thing. I think that's what I did anyway. We'll find out in a second. Yeah, green green for the um, leaves and stems. Have to fill those in. And then that also helps be the cleanup. You know, the whatever, if you want to call it dry printing or whatever. <laughs> So for this last part, I wanted to show you that you can combine your comb designs with other ways of mark making, like for instance, stencils. You know, we all use stencils on the gel plate. That's probably the most common thing to do, but combining it with um, combed designs as well is interesting. This stencil just happened to be the one that wasn't put away. So that's why I used it and not really a lot of thought put into it. Um, and it makes interesting prints. So then I just left the stencil on there. It's protecting the area of the combing. And then I'm putting some colors back over it. And it comes out a little bit different. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment so I know you're here. Or if you have a question, um, put it down below and I will answer you. And of course, uh, share this, pin it to your gel printing boards or your inspiration boards. And um, if you know somebody who really is interested in this, just send them the link. That's it for me for days 27 and 28. Bye-bye.